morning we'll be talking about the new Intel processor that came out and that is going to be the Core i7 Extreme Processor 4th Generation Core Extreme Processors and this is the 4960X. So I'm going to go hold it out for you guys so you can take a look at it. As you can see it's socket LGA 2011. This specific processor here is 3.6 gigahertz. It has 130 watt TDP, 15 megs of L3 shared cache. It has six cores with 12 threads, so technically you're getting six virtual th virtual cores on there. Also, it's got 40 PCIe lanes, and it supports DD DDR3 quad channel memory. So let's talk a little bit about it. In any case. What I've seen in my benchmarks is that it is a definite increase over Sandy Bridgey. I mean, there's an average of about 10%, let's say. Uh, I know Intel is claiming about 18%, but of course, you know, they're using, they're using uh, their own type of benchmarks that are, that are going to prove a little bit better than in the real world, in a sense. Of course, you know, they do that under scientific studies, etc., and the best possible conditions. Not to say that I'm trying not to do it in the best possible conditions, but in any case, with the benchmarks that we've run, which include PC Mark and Ada, and of course Excel Trader and our other suite, other parts of our suite, we've seen about a 10% increase over Sandy Bridge E. The great thing about this is, is it consumes more watts when it's at idle. I've got 80 watts idle with an MSI GTX. 780 lightning so 80 watts idle and then when you go ahead and you crank it up and you're using the video card it's pulling roughly about 256 to 265 watts now if you have a sandy bridge e do i suggest that you go ahead and purchase the new ivy bridge e if you're looking for a little bit better power consumption sure why not if you have the money sure why not if you have an older LGA 1366, then you need to upgrade. You're going to get a lot of benefits from that. You're going to get the better processing power, you're going to get the lower TDP, you're going to get the better power consumption, you're going to get increased performance. So that is a definite if you're going up from there. Also, remember, this does support quad SLI. So if you're like me and you have multiple monitors or you have big monitors, etc., and you want to uh, want to go ahead and use Quad SLI on it, feel free to go ahead. Does it support Crossfire? Yes, it does also. So that's another thing. So if you're into the AMD video cards, you can go ahead and use it with Crossfire. It does, it does very well with gaming, especially something that's compute intensive. If you have a game that's, that's going to rely on your computer, you will definitely see the increase in frames and the in increase in performance using this processor along with your video cards. For everyday use, one thing that I found with everyday use, it actually performs worse than the 4770K. But let's look at it this way. We're talking about surfing the internet, maybe watching a video here and there, maybe doing some light transcoding, etc. So yes, it's about, what we saw is about a 12% difference. The 4770K with daily performance, you know, like I said, internet surfing, etc. You're going to see about a 12% de decrease in performance with this processor. This processor is built for sheer compute power. That's what it's built for. So if you're a power user, you're doing CAD work, you're doing 3D modeling, you're doing any type of stuff like that, Excel, Word, you know, where you're do crunching spreadsheets and you need the processing power, this is going to be the processor for you. If you're an everyday user, do I suggest you purchase it? It's going to be a big cost. It's $990, this processor. And of course, for, I guess you could say, the most powerful processor made right now, is that a legitimate price? If you're willing to pay that, it's a legitimate price. If you're not willing to pay that, 
Intel does have other options. Also, there's other options from other processor manufacturers that you could go ahead and look at. But as I said, I mean, I, had, I, I have no qualms about it. I am technically a power user. I like to transcode videos, of course, but that's what I'm doing right now. I, I'll be doing that in a few seconds after shooting this video. I do a lot of Excel spreadsheets. I do a lot of power user things in my personal life. So since I need that processing power, I would say, yes, it is worth it for me, and this processor is a benefit. So you have to realize this is for power users, those who want the power, those who could afford it. You can't just trash something because you can't afford something or you say, oh, well, for that, I'll just buy this. Let's stop doing that. Every area has a purpose. If you're a mainstream user, you want to use a mainstream CPU. If you're a power user, you're going to use a power CPU. So please do me a favor. Don't put in the comments, oh, well, I'll go ahead and buy this, or this is too expensive, or that. I really don't want to hear that. And in all honesty, as I said, if you are going to be purchasing this, purchasing this processor, you're going to be purchasing it for a reason. Because you want to run Quad SLI, because you want extreme gaming performance, because you're going to be doing CAD work, because you're going to be doing compute intensive processing. So in any case, is this the most power, powerful processor available when it comes to compute? Yes, it is. It gets an Editor's Choice Award. $990, that is a little bit steep, but we have to remember, this is the price point of this processor for the performance. Anything short of a server processor is not going to compare to what this processor could do. So in any case, everybody, let's go ahead and take a look at some benchmarks. We'll see you the next time. And remember, visit us at HighTechLegion.com because what I did was I went ahead and put two GTX 780s on this and ran it in an SLI, and I'm going to show you some benchmarks there. So we actually have a review up at www.HighTechLegion.com showing the numbers in SLI and single 780 on this card. Of course, you can also read the full review about this at HighTechLegion.com. Remember, that's HighTech, H-I-T-E-C-H. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, twitter.com, front slash HighTechLegion. And like us on Facebook, facebook.com, front slash HTL Reviews. Stay thirsty, my friends. I will see you the next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.